All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to After Lunch. Hopefully everybody had a wonderful meal. Uh, I'm Jennifer Danberg. Uh, I'm here from the Wild Rose School Division, in, which centers in Rocky Mountain House in Drayton Valley. And I'm here to talk to you about flexible learning. Uh, in uh, Wild Rose, I'm the Director of Instruction. Uh, so that means all things curriculum and instruction. Um, and I've been tasked with a special project this year. And I just started with them in September. So as I'm presenting to you today, I'm seven months in to a directorship and seven months into starting a completely new program. Uh, so when I share with you today, we're very much in a development stage, we're very much in early implementation, but we're already that excited about what's going on that we wanted to share. Uh, so up on the screen at some point. Um, I'm an avid Twitter person, uh, so feel free to follow me there. Uh, and the link on the bottom is actually the presentation that's on the screen. Uh, so if at any point you want to see those slides or any of the information, it's there for you. So flexible learning. Uh, it's a term that's been thrown around a lot. Um, have to start with the, uh, the, the wordle, because you know it's presentation cliche. You have to have a wordle in there somewhere. Uh, and as we were looking at what the heck we wanted to do to help support our students, um, we wanted to give them more options, we wanted to give them more spaces to learn, we wanted to support our teachers, and we were really looking at this through the concept of high school redesign, really looking at this through the concept of innovation and technology, and really looking at this through the eyes of how do we support students. So we wanted to provide more options for our students. We had no presence of online or blended learning other than using ADLC. So what we wanted to do was we wanted to provide more online learning options for our students uh, and we decided to start at the high school level. Which is really fun because my background is teaching kindergarten and grade five and grade six. Uh, and I've spent time in central office at Northern Gateway. Uh, and so it was really exciting to dive into this world of high school. Um, and what was exciting about it was I came at it at a perspective of loving technology and integrating technology. So how can we bring these principles of engagement to a high school level? Uh, as all our schools are looking this year at entering the high school redesign program, we really wanted to give them more options. So we came up with a philosophy. And this is very much the uh, cliche slide of too much text. So getting all our presentation cliches out of the way in the first two slides. Uh, and this was written partially by one of our outreach principals, uh, which is what I love, because she was looking at it from an outreach school. So flex learning is an educational philosophy that provides learners with increased choice regarding when, where, and how learning occurs, as well as personalization to suit learners. This is not new, but we didn't have enough options within our school division to actually meet those needs. Courses, materials, and opportunities will be developed to provide the opportunity to complete Alberta curriculum learning outcomes. Approaches are designed to provide students with information, allow students to contribute ideas and opinions, and give students opportunities for students to work with their other learners and teachers. So we want it to be about students. So what the heck did we do? And here's the fun bit. We wanted to change the way we looked at blended and online learning. Right now, there's a lot of online learning out there. There's wonderful things happening. You have the ADLC model, uh, where we can be part of courses that are run by teachers out of Pembina Hills. Uh, there's a lot of wonderful things happening out of Black Gold and the online community there. There's a lot of things that were happening in a VC space. Um, went to a presentation this morning. But what we really wanted to do is we wanted to move up the SAMR model to look at redefinition of what online and blended learning could be not just substituting regular old learning. I, we didn't want the model of teacher in front of the classroom talking to students. We wanted to see how we could not only improve instruction, but redefine what it really could be for our students. So we wanted to move it up the complexity level, not just the same thing on a different platform, but a completely different thing, which is exciting. So what's different about us? Uh, we we don't have a learning management system. We don't use Moodle, we don't use D2L, we don't use Canvas, we don't use Schoology. Well, we do use Schoology a little bit. But the idea is every course is different. One platform could not possibly fit our courses or all our students. So what we did was we use any and every platform. Uh, and I'm gonna share with you a whole bunch of courses that we've developed um, with the 
with the fun information, um, everything that I share and everything we've developed, you can have. There's a link on the last slide, so you have to stay. Uh, and it's all accessible, it's all shareable. Um, we've built everything so anybody can take and use it. Um, we were really struggling with learning management systems. Um, they don't really work well on mobile devices. Uh, they don't really work well for students in a rural context that don't have internet connectivity very strong, that's very strong, and, and that happens quite a bit. So everything we've built, the students can use and learn on a mobile device. Everything that we've built uh, is completely accessible on the internet. They don't have to have any special plugins. They don't have to have any special things. It's completely device agnostic. Uh, so if they have an iPad, they can use it. If they have a Chromebook, they can use it. They can also complete all their courses from a cell phone. So they can do it from anywhere. And, and we were really finding being locked into one management system limited us. And it also limited how we could present to students. So we use all sorts of things. Uh, we have a math course that does use some Schoology and uses Weebly. Uh, we have an English course that's using Weebly and Google Plus Communities. Um, I'm actually running one of the courses and I'm using a Google Classroom. So we're using all sorts of different platforms. And it's not that there's no LMS, it's that every course is different because every co course and the students in it are different. And I actually had a really interesting conversation with uh, Jeff Rawlings at the University of Alberta. Uh, he used to work in Wild Rose, and he said, well, what about the user experience? If everything is different, how can you possibly have your users figure out what's going on? And, uh, and I looked at him and I said, every classroom's different. Every classroom a student goes into, there's different expectations from the teachers. There's different way of handing things in. And that is such a good thing, because students get to learn in all sorts of different ways. And in this online world, we keep locking them into the same platform and it looks the same and every course looks the same because we're trying to be consistent, but are they learning a different skill set of dealing with life online or are they just learning to follow rules? Uh, so every course looks a little bit different. Every course, sometimes you might hand things in by emailing a teacher. Sometimes you might hand things in by submitting it on Google and sharing. Sometimes you might hand things in by walking across the hall to the teacher. And that's the other thing that's different. What we've done is we have six half-time teachers embedded in our schools. We didn't create an online school. Uh, we didn't want the things we were developing to be separate. We wanted it to be embedded right in our schools. And so the kids have access to a teacher that's in their building. And whether that's their teacher for the course, it might not be, but it's a teacher that's part of that team. That's one of the big problems we were finding with a lot of our ADLC stuff. The courses were strong, but our teachers, the teachers were often so far away, they had no connection. So we wanted to use local teachers. Uh, and we went with a half-time model, so those teachers were teaching in a regular classroom, but they were also teaching in an online blended environment. So that way they had all sorts of connections across the school. These teachers are, are some of our best and brightest, and they're coaching basketball, and they're doing all sorts of things, and that just helps to build those relationships. And it's been really, really positive. So if we go to the next slide, this is our bunch. And I love this photo because it's actually not from very far away. Uh, this is out on the Kananaskis River. And we have six amazing teachers. Um, they're young. They make me feel old. It's, it's alarming. Uh, and they're just so passionate about what we do. Uh, last night as I was working on this, I shared the presentation just so they would know what I was talking about. And three of them jumped in and helped at 11 o'clock last night. Um, so they're, they're interesting. Um, Kim Demery, the first name on the list, she was a grade four teacher last year. And this year she's taken on a half-time role at an outreach and teaching with us. So she comes from this elementary background and she's just doing things completely differently in an outreach setting as well as with us. Um, Kim is really interesting. She's our assistive technology specialist. So she's half-time assistive technology and half-time working in a blended environment. Shelly's a math guru. She has grown out of our system. She's a perfect rural, return to rural example. She went to David Thompson High School, uh, which has no town, just a school. Um, and she lives out near Rimby still and teaches with us in Rocky Mountain House and is an absolutely amazing math teacher. Um, Pam Dora. oh, I've known Pam since she was about 14. She'd be embarrassed if I said that. Um, and she's our English guru um, and she's, Wonderful. Um, Don and Mike are our fine arts and CTS people, um, and they're, 
such creative people just wait until they see Don's Flex um, textiles course. Yeah, crocheting online, crazy. So I asked them to each create a slide uh, about some interesting things that we've been doing so far. Um, this is a piece of our Calm course, which was one of our foundations. And one of the things we did in our, we went rafting out here, Canadian Rockies was wonderful. We had six lead teachers from Canadian Rockies come and work with us in our first week together as a team. Uh, and these were inspiring people that had been doing wonderful things and really helped us get going. And so we started to build Calm together. Because um, we, especially the, the new ADLC Calm is much better, but the one from a couple years ago, oh boy. Um, and the way Calm was being handled in our classrooms, the students saw it as, I want to get through it. So we wanted to shift that. Uh, and we wanted money to stop going out of our division and stay in the division instead of paying for courses outside. So this was our solution. So this is a piece of Calm. This is actually the third piece of Calm, which is all around careers. Um, and this is how it would look on a mobile device and how it would look on a regular computer. So it, we've built it so it's completely mobile friendly, um, which having been a recent university student, couldn't possibly run D2L or Moodle on my mobile phone um, as I was working through on my grad courses. Uh, and it's really exciting because when we started to build Calm, we started to realize it's an online course, but how do we connect students? So we started to build, pardon the pun, but communities. Yeah, it's good stuff. <laughs> and we're using Google+. Now, Google Plus is a social media platform, but it ties in with their Google Apps for Education accounts that they all have. So it's kind of like Google's version of Facebook, but because it's run through our Google Apps system, we can create, control, monitor, lock down as need be. So these communities have all the students from our comm courses in them, and it's the way for the students to talk to each other. Now, we just took our first registrations in February, and we have as I checked last night, 82 students in Calm, in a division of just around 5,000, considering we started two months ago, we're very happy with that. So we have 80 students that are working in different towns all across. We have one from outside our district. It was actually a homeschool student that has decided to come back to us and join and take their Calm this way. So all those little inroads, we're very pleased. Uh, and they can contribute to this environment. Um, so one of the things they had to do was pick a photo that represented how they were feeling. So you know, we, when you look at some of these, one of them's really feeling overloaded with their job and their exams, and, and another one's feeling how, trying to balance stress. Um, and some of them were made or put videos on there, but they started to talk to each other. And they started to talk to each other more than they would talk to in a regular classroom. So you had students from Breton talking to students in Rocky about how to balance their lives. And Calm is becoming a meaningful, relevant course. And the other piece that's great about this is we're online. Um, we have students and teachers that are sometimes in their community, but sometimes aren't. Um, one of the main teachers for Calm and the first bit is in Drayton. Um, and we have a lot of students in Breton. And she's gone out to the school a couple of times to meet them, which has been a huge piece of this, is we, have a, we go and talk to the kids. Um, but then they can connect on this community. So Dawn can go in and leave comments based on the students' comments, live, give feedback, connect with them, make those relationships. And it's on a space that makes sense for kids. It's not in an artificial forum on some system that they don't use. This is something they use in their everyday lives. Uh, so it's really familiar to, with them. You, you, you can tell just based on their avatars, you know, you have a little Calgary Flames logo going there. They get to be themselves. They get to personalize the, their profiles. Um, and it's been really fun to watch those relationships develop, which we, we got a lot of help from a lot of people that have been working in the online world in Alberta, because a lot of the bigger districts have online programs built. Um, so we spent a lot of time talking to Terry Reed out of Black Gold. We spent a lot of time talking to Palliser, which is a district I used to teach in, because they just started an online school two years ago, so we wanted to learn from their lessons. Uh, I had a few friends in ADLC that I, got, uh, that I spoke to, and I'm lucky enough to be good friends with the vice principal of the CBE Learn program, the, the Calgary Board of Education's online program. So did a lot of Google Hangouts with these experts from around the province, and they all said relationships was the biggest part. So we tried to find ways, and like I said, we're new, uh, to connect with students and build those relationships. But we're finding the biggest part of it is that our teachers are in the schools. 
So they already have relationships with kids, and that's been a huge part of online and blended learning. So this is another one. This is our English 30-1. Uh, so your highest high-end academic subjects, and again, you can have all of this. Just wait for it, it's at the end. And it is, it is so neat, because the first step in the course is pick your own pathway. Do you want to do one big project? Do you want to pick your novel? Here's one novel we can do together. Uh, and Pam is also running uh, an English community um, where they can talk about their selection in literature. So they, she has one piece that they have to do. And then after that, they, have, they can choose from different things. Um, we're tapping into the local library system to get access to resources. We're tapping into the overdrive system, which we are part of in our school division. Because um, a lot of these texts, were, uh, she uses Project Gutenberg quite a bit, which is a place for online e-text. Uh, so the students can get any of the books they're looking for and have such a wide range because we have access to such great online resources. So they can have a choice between so many different types of literature because we have access to those in, in an e-format. Uh, she did have one student say, hey, can I have a hard copy of the book? And we made that happen because that was what was best for that student. Um, but it was easy enough to get a hard copy of the book without having to ship it from Barhead. Um, we just walked across the whole hall and gave it to them. Uh, so it's been really, really great so far. Um, I'll, we'll dig into her website a little bit more, but when I asked Pam to make a slide, she's like, well, just put the main part of my site because I think it looks pretty. A a but it, it said a lot. Part of this was building content that was appealing, that was relevant, and a lot of online courses it doesn't, it, it just looks like it's come out of a box. Um, and part of this was we put a lot of design, uh, an, an intentional design, both to make it useful on a mobile device, but also make it pretty. Maybe we have to, maybe there's just too many of us on our team that have an arts background. <laughs> uh, this is one from my converted grade four teacher, Kim. Uh, and this is Science 10. And she's teaching in an outreach scenario and she's trying to infuse inquiry into both outreach and online learning, and she's been working with Galileo. Uh, and so the Galileo and Barb Martin has been working with our team, uh, we've worked with her for two days, on how we can infuse inquiry and intentional design thinking into online courses. Instead of, here's your PDF, watch the video, answer the questions. They're very much inquiry-based which is really fun. Our Math 10C is all around forensics, and we're building a parallel course in forensics that they can end up with two sets of credits. The Science 10, she, all, she did the entire Science 10 curriculum around cold, and it's all really, really neat stuff around the science of cold, <laughs> and, and how that fits into chemistry, how that fits into physics, how that fits into biology. There's a few outcomes that we couldn't make fit molar mass, it's not work with cold. <laughs> but we're working. Uh, so there's a few pieces, uh, a few outliers of, okay, here's a concept, uh, of, and there are a few direct instruction pieces in there to help through the inquiry process to scaffold, but you need those pieces. But the fact that it has an overarching theme, um, it's a bit different for a lot of kids. So they're like, well, I just want what page in the textbook? And it's like, no, you have to go play in the snow. It's actually part of it because uh, it's all around matter and energy and what you can do with that. Um, what the other fun piece that she's developing and she, she, uh, is she's, she's done Phys Ed 10. So we're doing Phys Ed as an online course uh, and Phys Ed in outreach because Phys Ed 10 is a graduation requirement. So it's been really, really fun because it's all around using community facilities. So in Rocky, we have a great outdoor skating rink. Um, in Drayton, there's a swimming pool that's rather underutilized. There's great walking paths. So it's all about wellness and using community facilities around you or using your farm. Because we have a few kids like that. In Caroline, they're going, well, what do we have? The swimming pool's only open in the summer, sometimes. Uh, so it was very much about what's in your own farmyard, what's in your own community, what's in your own space that you can use for wellness and activity. Um, she's using things like Fitbits, she's using things like geocaching and GPS technology, she's using their mobile phones and some of the great apps you can track on there, because there's so much activity involved in a phys ed course, so they have to actually give a screenshot that they went walking and their phone tracked it. Uh, and so it's, it's been really fun to watch a phys ed course 
blossom in an outreach scenario and in an online scenario. At our outreach in Drayton, you know, they have yoga breaks and it's, it's so much fun to walk in and, and everyone, including the principal in an outreach, has just stopped and done yoga. Uh, they, as a, whole, as a whole organization, they went sledding one day right before Christmas as part of let's use our community, let's be active together. Instead of just outreach, kids coming and putting their heads down and working, trying to get through, they're building that community and that outreach as part of the spirit of what we're building in our online learning. Now that outreach school is pretty special. They've redesigned it as a community outreach. Uh, if you're an outreach person and you get a chance to visit the Drayton Outreach School, it's, it's a pretty special place right now. And lucky enough to have somebody who works in both that's bringing that enthusiasm over. Uh, this one's my course. I'm a director and I'm teaching 155 online students right now off the side of my desk. It's fun, it's so fun, I get to be a teacher. Um, I miss the classroom. So as being a part of my team and, and to feel like I was leading the team and to feel like I was understanding what they were going through as we launched this, I launched the first course in October. Um, and the course is all around CTS modules of word processing and learning in an online environment. It's a five credit course. Uh, and it's how to learn and use tools online. Specifically our Google tools. Um, we're very much a googly kind of place. Um, to a point where we're just about at the point where we're one-to-one -one Chromebooks um, from grade three up. A few holes here and there, budgets are problematic right now, <laughs> but uh, we're just about at the point where we're almost one-to-one -one Chromebooks with everybody, which is so exciting. Um, so it's a course on how to better leverage them. A and my ulterior motive here, and I don't know if I've told the teachers at the high schools, is if the students know all the skills, they help the teachers along. So it's it's quiet prodding to move my teachers along as well. Uh, so the first thing they learn is how to search. Oh my goodness, it's been fun to watch students not know how to search online. Uh, and, and really, you can do that. Um, and they learn how to use email. A lot of kids don't use email. They, why would they use email? Uh, so it's, it's an interesting skill for kids to have to go back and learn. Uh, we learn what the cloud is and how that can help us and what we can leverage. Um, drive docs, slides, and sheets. So. Microsoft Word equivalents would be Word, PowerPoint, Excel, but in a different kind of format. How can we use Google Chrome in an online browser and all the apps and extensions? Those of you that aren't here, there's a Google Summit going on. There's a lot of people excited about Google. They're just in Edmonton. Uh, how to use a calendar, how to manage your life. Really important stuff. Uh, Google Hangouts, so Skype, FaceTime. This is how we connect with our students. And it is great because a Google Hangout works on any device. I don't have to be tied to video conference equipment in room 22 at the school. So I can use my phone, I can use my Chromebook, I can use my laptop, I can use my iPad and connect with students. Um, I have a bit of a tan. I spent the last two weeks in Curacao, uh, which is slightly north of Venezuela. And from there, I had three different Hangouts with students because they needed to catch up on different things and they had a question of their teacher. So I hid the beach towel. And, uh, and connected with them as they needed to to ask their teacher a question. Um, but I could do it from my cell phone. I could do it from my car. I have answered calls on the road between Rock and Drayton um, with students that need a question when the cell phone coverage didn't drop out. Uh, it is such a useful tool for us in terms of face-to-face -face interaction with our students. Sometimes we have a classroom in Breton with 12 kids in Calm, and their teacher can be in Frank Matic and Drayton, and they can communicate. Maybe it's just one student. It dials through to the students. We were finding a lot of limitations with VC. Um, you have to be in that space. You have to be in that particular room. You have to be connected to the school's network. Google Hangouts work on any device, whether it's an iDevice, device, whether it's a Google device. It even works on BlackBerry. I have one. I don't have a BlackBerry. I have one student with BlackBerry. We made it work. Uh, so it's wonderful in, in terms of being able to connect with students anytime. Sometimes it's just a text chat, sometimes it's a video chat. Uh, so, and the students have been really good about not being too shy about just popping on and asking. Are you available right now? I have a question. We have three of us in Breton that have a question. Awesome, I can connect in. Uh, the last piece of the course is all around building content online, um, using Google+, using sites, um, and using different places to post online. Um, what's neat about this course, um, is it's helping the students gain skills with the tools. Uh, they also get a tool. Um, as part of the funding, we're looking at students using a Google Chromebook when they 
so most of the kids in the course are in grade 10, so they get a Chromebook to use, um, and they get to keep, use that for grade 10, 11, 12. Um, and after three years, that's very much the lifespan of that machine. Uh, so it, it's exciting for the kids because then they have something to use in their classes once they finish the course. So we have a whole bunch of different courses um, that we've been developing. Now, the last six on the list are different. These are our dual credit options, and some of you may have seen these. These are offered through Lakeland College and the East Catholic, Central Catholic School Division, somewhere over there, by Vermillion. Uh, and they're available to any school jurisdictions. So any school jurisdictions can be part of this dual credit program. And what they are is there are six courses. You can see the credit designations there. Uh, exploring exceptionalities play, environmental sustainability, which the kids really like, heavy oil and gas, aesthetics and soil science. And they get high school CTS credits as well as college credit from Lakeland, but that college credit is transferable to um, any Alberta college. So they get, it's, it's not a whole program, it's just single courses, but it's kind of like a taste tester. Is this something I want to be more of? And if it is, I already have one of my college courses done. Um, so far, I have 34 students registered in these six different, I have nobody in soil science, I don't know. Apparently they didn't want that in Rocky Mountain House. Uh, but in the five courses we do have people registered in, we have 33 people, and it's been really exciting. Um, Lakeland uses the Blackboard Collaborate system, making an LMS face there. Um, that has caused us the most problems because uh, there's a plug-in and you can only use it on PCs or Macs. You can't, you, uh, and the kids are like, but my phone, and I'm like, sorry, it doesn't work on your phone. Uh, so <laughs> the limitations of their system have actually been the biggest limitations so far on us um, and it took us an extra week to get them going, but they've just started. So we have kids doing college level stuff and they're really excited about it. Um, the ones in play and exploring exceptionalities, those are two that can go towards the early childhood certificate. Um, and that can be an entire online program out of, for, or out of Vermilion. Um, environmental sustainability and the heavy oil and gas go well together, surprisingly. Um, so that's been really positive. The heavy oil and gas one has been our it, most subscribed to the point where we had four students that didn't get in because they were too late and the course was full. Um, so Black Gold was very, very lovely and shared us their heavy oil and gas um, resources. I don't think, I don't know if there's anybody from Black Gold here, but thank you. Uh, for those four students that couldn't get in. Uh, so it's really neat. So you actually are using college professors. Uh, the way that's funded is they get $100 per CEU and we get 87. So we're not getting very much back in terms of funding, but they get college credit and it's the college level instruction. So they get two thirds of that credit, which makes sense. And it's all, so yeah, it's, um, if you just look it up, dual credit in Lakeland College, any school division can be a part of that but don't fill out my courses. I have lots of students that want to take it in September. Uh, so some, I've talked to you about the COM. Now COM's fun, because um, they get three different teachers by the time they're done that course. So we go through the personal section, we go through the career section, uh, and we go through the finance section. And I actually had my math teachers write the finance section, and they found that it very much tied in with 10-3. Uh, so we have a little bit of overlap between those two courses, which is really fun, where they can uh, do a project in one that helps to go towards their comm class if they're in both. The Vis Ed 10, that's our community-based one. Uh, English 30-1 and Pam's developing the 30-2 this semester. Um, and we're looking at humanities, there's no social studies on that list, we know that. Uh, our 10-C, that's another one of those graduation requirements. We're trying to get the big rocks of things you need to graduate. Um, so the kids had those options as we just start up this program. Uh, so Math 10C, that's a whole course designed around the inquiry of forensic evidence in nature, uh, Fibonacci sequences, and it's such a neat course. Um, and the teacher there, she's done all her own videos and uh, she's been doing really great things. Uh, she had two students that did the course as she was building it, so we had two already finished that course uh, and they had, the kids were so excited about it. Um, and she said those were kids that were not excited in her math class because they were actually physically sitting in her math class falling asleep. So she's like, we're going to do this differently. And you're going to go in this online course and you're going to tell me all about it. And they were excited about math uh, to the point where they want to try the dash one stream of math instead of the dash two stream of math. Uh, but they want to do it online. <laughs> we're, not, I'm, we're not there yet. But uh, Shelly's helping develop the courses as they go again. So she has some more guinea pigs. 
Uh, the 10-3, that one's really fun. Um, we're also looking at some 10-4 stuff. We have some gaps in KE programming, uh, but it's not a huge student number, so it's what courses do we need versus what are our student needs. That almighty funding dollar gets in the way. Uh, Science 10 is fun. At the same time they're developing that, they're also developing Science 14. Um, textiles, okay, wicked awesome course. It's all on YouTube. So it's all around, the first choice you have is hooks or needles. So do you want to crochet or do you want to knit? And you can do one credit, you could do up to 30 credits, and you can go down this giant rabbit hole and the whole website is choose your own adventure uh, and links to YouTube videos teaching you different stitches. And if you're at all craft oriented, I am not. I'm sure it makes sense. Um, and even goes down to a rabbit hole of quilting. Um, but it is so neat. Oh dear. Media design and communication. Uh, I have a CTS person, our poor Mike on our team. We're, we're all women except Mike. Uh, so Mike, Mike's working very hard uh, and he's working on uh, a whole bunch of pieces around animation, video editing, and all stuff that can be done from here, which he was actually really upset with me when I told him the limitation is you have to be able to do it on a cell phone. Um, but that's where students operate and that's, so we're looking at design that can be done with all sorts of apps. Uh, so it's been really fun um, to watch the first students go through that and they're developing logos and they're working on typology and different graphics pieces. Um, some of it, as we get to into the higher level, the not just the grade 10 courses, we're finding they're going to need different programs um, using a lot of SketchUp. Um, but so far, all the grade 10 courses we've managed to design to be able to work on a cell phone. So we're trying to give our students options. Uh, we're trying to give our, we recognize that our students don't often have internet at home, but they might have cell coverage. Um, and most often have at least some cell coverage so that they can work in that modality. And that this is the device most of them own. So let's use it. Uh, the Google Apps for Education, I shared. Uh, other things we're working on this semester. Uh, because we're new, we spent our first six months developing and we just launched in February. So we're quite literally a month in of students and classes. Um, we have almost 270 students registered now for 1,304 credit units if they finish. Uh, so that's really exciting really early on. Uh, so we're looking at sustainability and how we keep funding it. That's definitely one of our future challenges. Uh, and looking at how we share and how we leverage other things and what's out there. So if we go, this is happening in October. I'm on the organizing committee, so I'm doing a small plug, but this is a space where if your division's just looking at online learning or it's stalled or you want to reinvigorate. We're starting a blended online learning conference, October 25th to 27th in Edmonton. Um, I built the website, it's pretty. It works on mobile phones. It's not on Moodle. Uh, <laughs> so it's blended. Uh, and it's, it's exciting because there's a lot of people out there in this space that are doing really interesting creative things uh, and a lot of transition happening as the technology and the online world transitions. Uh, so this is a space where we can talk more about it uh, and share more and work together more. Uh, so if you have people in your division that are looking at this, this would be a really great forum for them. Uh, there's never been an online blended learning conference in Alberta before. There was one in BC last year. I know a few people went to. So it's kind of a, a new direction as we look at the possibilities of learning online um, in lots of different ways. So, okay, here's the money. Here's all the stuff. Uh, the top link links to the WRSD website and it is a course outline of everything we're offering. The bottom one is a Google Doc. Now this is cool because it's Google Drive folders filled with all the materials. So if you want to take the 30-1 course, it links to the website and how it's all presented to students, but then there's a folder of all the stuff to build in the background. So if you want to look at the Google course, you're thinking, hey, kids do this Google course, they get a Chromebook, this works, this is interesting or we want to build some skills around there, it's all there. If you're looking, hey, Math 10-3, something we've been looking at, we haven't been able to build a course, it's all there. Uh, and you'll see there's lots of different kinds of web platforms. Some of them are on Weebly, some of them are on Schoology, some of them are on Canvas, some of them are on Google Classroom, but there's access to all of it. Uh, so it's all there to share. And 
we're not, we're, it, it's view only with links that you can go to, so you can't edit it, but you, everything's there. But what we're looking for and what we want to do is build a model of collaboration and sharing. Uh, I've been working a lot with Darren Larson here at Canadian Rockies, and he's taking the 30-1 course and seeing what he can do with it, which is really exciting for him, a and what they can do with it. And they're looking at building some social studies for us now, so we can do some sharing. Um, but Wild Rose is, is a district that is very much in the model of shared services. Um, last year up here, our IT director would have been sitting up here with Canadian Rockies, um, and now they're working a lot with Golden Hills and Chinook's Edge. Um, and increasingly more divisions on how they can leverage technology together, how they can leverage a shared internet connection, how they can leverage a shared firewall, I'm going geek. Um, but how do we leverage shared learning? And there's a lot of repositories out there, there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of Moodle courses out there, there's a lot of different things. Um, Black Gold is housed a lot. But this is a different look at how online learning can be using tools that the kids have. Um, and lots of flexibility built into those courses. So share, if it's something you want to be a part of. I would love to talk more. Uh, I would love to work with other school divisions and build. Um, I would love to see what's out there. Um, that's why we want to share so openly, because we would love to see what else is there. We're all small jurisdictions. Uh, we're all rural, and that's why we're here. So we need to work together because we don't have the capacity of a CBE to build everything for every student. Um, if you've never been to their Career and Technology Center, oh my goodness, things, things that I wish. Um, their Lord Shaughnessy High School that they've redone, it's a wonderful place. Um, so how can we work together to help provide those same kind of opportunities for our students? So that's why I left time for lots of questions. And I left time for a little bit of pushback. I was kind of expecting so. Um, so I'm going to throw it out to the floor. Questions, comments, opportunities, feedback, positive or negative. <laughs> Absolutely. It, uh, it came out of Northern Gateway where they didn't have anything I'm talking to them. Um, and I saw it as a gap there, so I was lucky to start to fill that gap in Wild Rose, and I think it's a gap for other small districts as well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Can you talk about how the teachers, those half-time teachers, are organized in relation to the courses in terms of how their days are scheduled? Absolutely. Uh, so I have six half-time teachers. I have two in Drayton, where's my brain? I have two in Rocky, I have one at DT, and then one that works at a central office because she's part-time assistive technology. Um, first semester, it was afternoons because we were developing and they worked together. I couldn't even, I didn't even, I didn't mandate it. I didn't say do it. Every one of these courses is not built by one person except mine. <laughs> it was me that didn't work well with others. Um, the 10-3 the is a teacher in Rocky and a teacher in Drayton. The English course is a teacher from DT and a teacher in Drayton. They collaborated completely online. Uh, we met face to face twice in that six months. Um, they were constantly on Google Chat. They were constantly on Google Hangout. Um, I'd wander down the hall into Kim's office and she'd be working with the other Kim and just kind of pop my head in and be like, oh good, you don't need me. My biggest job is get out of their way. Uh, so first semester they were all half time in the afternoons so they could very much work together. Uh, and they worked together more than I ever would have expected. Um, all the courses are built by more than one teacher, which makes them that much stronger. Um, this semester, we've changed things up. The outreach teacher especially was finding that it was really hard to separate her days at outreach, to try and teach half a day at outreach and then stop teaching outreach. The kids don't, didn't understand that, so she's doing every second day. Um, our assistive technology person's a little bit all over the map, depending on the needs of the kids. Um, and then we have our teacher in DT works half time in the morning and the other ones work half time in the afternoon. So we spread ourselves out intentionally in the second semester so we had more accessibility to kids. Uh, because they were co-teaching and co-creating, if, if one of the English teachers isn't available, the other one is. So that's how we tried to back it up. Um, it's not 100% perfect. Small school scheduling is rather hard, I've been told by the principals. <laughs> so it's not perfect. Uh, occasionally there's a block here and there. Uh, as they told me, I have seven teachers, Jen. No, she can't have every morning off. I take that feedback. 
Uh, so we made it work as best we could. So yeah, when we were developing, we had the same block. Now we divide mornings, afternoon, or full days, depending on the needs of the schools. Uh, so far, so good. Like I said, we're a month in. That might look differently next year. Uh, but the half time has been great because it keeps them grounded in their classroom instead of just sitting in front of a computer all day. Hi. Sorry. Sorry, I'm, I know her. And so my question was, are there any synchronous supports for that learning? So you've talked about the platform and that yes. the teachers are available face-to-face -to, -face to blend the approach, but are there synchronous sessions? Do they host classes? Are all the kids come at the same time? Sometimes. Depends on the course. Uh, Calm and Breton, they every Wednesday meet at 2 o'clock. Um, there's synchronous stuff built into the dual credit stuff. We're actually finding that's a barrier. Uh, because 2 o'clock doesn't always work with everybody's bell schedule across seven schools. Different bell schedules. Uh, it totally depends on the group. Uh, most of our synchronous support means the teacher goes and sees them face to face. Uh, because we're local, we can do that. I was down in Caroline on Wednesday and I went and met with my kids. Uh, they had a grade nine, 10 block and I had mostly grade nines and tens there. So I got to hang out with my Caroline kids in the course. So the synchronous sessions are face to face um, and that's where the blended piece comes in. Um, it's better for them to be able to talk to us. We've had more mileage in the last month than we did during development because our teachers are going to different schools and talking to them. Uh, the teacher out at David Thompson drives the 20 minutes into Rocky to meet with her kids in 30-1. Um, so the synchronous face-to-face -face is in person. Um, and because we're local, we can do it. And that's been the best part of it, uh, is the local context and being able to leverage the expertise of our own teachers. Um, the other piece in that shared link um, is we haven't just been building these courses for kids, we've been building them for the other teachers. So as we built, we built a student, kind of the front facing for the students, but we built materials in the background that any teacher could take. So if you're a teacher teaching a more traditional 10-3, here's some great, interesting stuff. It's our little way of pushing a lot, some pedagogy along. Uh, so if you're teaching 30-1, you have a whole folder of interesting things now you can use. Uh, so that's been really, really fun. We're not just supporting our students, we're trying to support our other teachers. So that's been really, really great. Um, and and we, uh, we've been seeing a lot of positive things. We've been getting a lot of feedback from kids that, wow, this is different, this is hard, this is, I, some of them just want something they can fill in and, and read and fill in. Um, they're, they're, we're retraining some students. Uh, so that's been really interesting so far. Can you elaborate a little bit more on some of the specific strategies you're using to help rural students overcome connectivity issues when they're at home? Uh, being extremely, extremely flexible. Uh, I had a student email me <laughs> 10.30 on a Saturday night, because they do that, uh, and say, hey, can I do the video piece of the Google course um, with a friend because her house has better connectivity? So we want to work on our videos together. She has a good internet connection. Mine's not great. So we're going to do that section together. Sure. Great idea. Uh, part of it was realizing that our area had better cell coverage than it did home broadband connections. Um, Drayton, it hasn't been an issue at all. They just got fiber to the premises to every house in Drayton. So they have the fastest internet in Alberta. 20 minutes outside of Drayton. Mm. Nothing. Uh, so a lot of it is things that work offline as well as online. So that's the great thing about the Google system, if you don't know it particularly well or if it's a different system, is you can make your docs accessible offline and the kids can work offline and then when they come back to a place of connectivity, it automatically uploads. So one of the first pieces in the Google course is how to work offline. So we tried to train them into it. Um, a lot of the kids have a block in their schedule so they're actually scheduled in during school time to work on different things, especially the calm. We were finding the most success was actually give them time in their schedule if they had time in their schedule. So we don't have a lot of students right now that are working beyond the timetable. They're, they're working beyond the timetable because they're students, but they're not scheduled beyond the timetable. They actually have some time in a building with wonderful connectivity, um, go IT department. Um, that, so they have lots of connectivity at school. Uh, the other fun feature of our school division is our Wi-Fi is completely open and on 24 hours without a password. So at any point, they can come near a school building and get Wi-Fi access if they're in town or if they're by a rural school. 
and I saw it at Condor. Condor is one of our little towns, um, and there was kids sitting on the stoop at five o'clock with their phones using the Wi-Fi. I don't think they were doing schoolwork. But they have that option. Uh, so the Wi-Fi is always on in our, in our rural schools. Uh, so they, they, they always have somewhere to come back to, uh, which has been really positive uh, for the communities. And luckily we have a strong enough bandwidth that it all works. Uh, not a perfect answer, I realize. The perfect answer would be really good internet everywhere. Awesome. Ah, I used to talk to Lyle Roberts about Heffernet. Uh, when I talked down in Picture Butte, and, I, and Lyle was down in Prairie Rose, and we said, okay, Heffernet, if we put like a Wi-Fi receiver on every cow down here, we're good. <laughs> the cows wander around, they'll spread it out, yeah. Heffernet. <laughs> <laughs> How many of your high schools are in the redesign? Uh, none of them now, all of them next. Uh, funding. Uh, so right now we're funded through CEU generation. Uh, if we go on high school redesign, we get locked into funding. But what if our outreach schools don't and we register kids through the outreach schools? We're making it work. Uh, we're really excited about high school redesign. Um, a lot of my flex teachers are on the high school redesign teams within their own buildings. And that's one of the reasons we wanted to provide these resources. So as the high schools looked at how they can change their days and change the way things are offered, we have some ways to change course delivery and some different kind of materials for teachers as they look at different schedules. Uh, so that was really an exciting piece of it is we were building this so high school redesign had more leverage and more resources moving forward. Uh, we have not cleared all the funding hurdles yet. I'm looking at Gord. <laughs> He's my funding guy. Oh, and Brian. Sorry, yes, Brian, yes. He, superintendent, this is associate superintendent. Too many bosses in the room. <laughs> Feedback, questions? I was intentionally leaving time so you could poke back at me. Oh, I knew my Northern Gateway colleagues would give me a hard time. <laughs> Have you had any pushback from students or parents around the idea of online assessment? No. Waiting for it. Uh, I did have one student drop on calm. Sad day. Uh, it was too hard. It was too much. I, I want you to tell me what to do. I don't like... It's too open. That was the feedback I got. So it wasn't based on assessment. It was based on a more open pedagogy. Um, and a more self-directed pedagogy, and that wasn't working for that student. Fair enough. Um, we're trying to get her back. We're not, it's not over. <laughs> uh, in terms of uh, assessment pieces, um, the students really like immediate feedback. Um, being one of the teachers in, the, in, the, in my course, um, I can leave comments on their Google Docs. Um, we have a shared spreadsheet back and forth where I can give them immediate feedback. Uh, and, and calculate grades. We're right in the middle of a school information system transition. Don't want to talk about power school yet. Don't want to talk about SERS either. Uh, so so we're, we're really patching together how we're reporting to students right now because we're moving systems. Um, but the faster the better. Um, like when I have a student that completes an assignment and it's not marked within three hours, I usually have another email sitting there going, so how did I do? And part of that is we're, I'm, we're developing good relationships. So they can do that, and it's partly a, okay, I'm actually presenting on it right now. Just give me half an hour. Um, or I might have gone to the beach. I, I posted on, on our course site that, hey, I'm gone for the next two weeks. I'm going to do some marking. Um, and I had three students email me, are you back yet? Are you back yet? <laughs> so it, it's been good. Um, the biggest challenge with assessment is getting it done fast enough um, because the students want to keep moving. Because when they're self-paced and they're motivated, they're not all motivated, but they want to keep going kind of a non-answer because I think we're too early to have that pushback yet. Oh, the yeah, expectation. Uh, I have one teacher who doesn't like it at all for, from my six in the program. Um, my better half's getting a little fed up with it. Um, <laughs> when you spend time with a teacher, you get used to it, I guess. Um, most of the teachers are really receptive. Um, they're online teachers. The internet doesn't turn off. 
Um, that was partly what they signed up for. Not an expectation that they'd work more hours, just that it's different. Uh, so we're more flexible with our time. Um, if they have a sick kid at home, then they can work from home and that works really well for them. Um, push back from one of my staff, he turns off, of, oh, that labeled it, pardon me. Um, the teacher turned off the, turns off his email at about six o'clock and that works for him and it hasn't been a problem yet. Um, so that's fair. That balances his work life and um, that was the decision he made and so far it's been a positive decision. So. Lots of questions, awesome. Um, that question was in regards to the teachers who are actually involved in the creation of the courses. Yes. What about the, the kickback from the teachers or the feedback from the teachers who aren't involved in the creation of your online courses? However, your kids are now so in love with this online learning that they want more from all of their teachers. How are they responding to you in a positive way or how is that happening? <laughs> Um, the feedback from my team last night was, this is really good, you should go do that at all our staff meetings. Uh, partly because they're embedded in the schools, they've been sharing and explaining what they've been doing all along. So that's been super positive. Um, but they said, yeah, no, maybe all our teachers should hear this. If some of them are watching right now. Hey guys. Uh, it, so that, that, I think that's part of it, is an increased level of communication. Um, I am trying to push some pedagogy. Uh, I'm being open and overt about that. There's some different materials, there's some different ways of learning. We're looking at high school redesign, and part of that is shifting a pedagogy. Um, some of them don't want to talk to me, some of them are ignoring me, some of them are like, you're new, you're doing crazy things. Uh, we'll work on it. Uh, but I, I, such good feedback from my team last night when they're like, yeah, go do this at staff meetings. They need to hear it. So um, I think that's really positive in my next step. Very exciting project you have there, very cool. Thank you. Uh, someplace I wanted to be about 10 years ago, but that's, that's the <laughs> way it is. <laughs> Great enthusiasm for the project. Uh, I can't speak for the Rural Education uh, Symposium, but I'd sure like to hear you again next year with some learnings that, uh, as yes. you stumble through this, because it, it's a mega project, and uh, you've and done we extremely are so well. Thank you, and we are so new. Um, so yes, I would love to hear myself in a year as well. Hopefully I have a lot of energy, and hopefully I'm this enthusiastic and positive, uh, and I suspect I will be. Um, based on the people I work with, they are just amazing, um, and they are all such different individuals and different characters, and uh, it was quite fun that the rafting photo, um, one of the people on the raft had had a bad experience rafting and was really apprehensive, and the team just pulled around this person and supported and, and got in the boat, and we went rafting, and yeah, we fell out, but that was fine. Pulled, and it was such a great metaphor for how we've been working together. Um, so it was one of those team building things that has, when you have to work through people and their apprehension, uh, it's been really positive. So based on the people I'm working with in the team, um, I expect only good things. So yes, if you're starting something, pick the right team, huge. Has Division Office committed to continuing with these six teachers over the next one or two years? Has there been any indication how long I might okay, be supported? My superintendent. <laughs> to be determined. Uh, we don't know. Uh, my superintendent described it as a big rock that he wants to see move forward. Uh, budgeting process, uh, as everyone in the room is aware of, is rather up in the air. I'm, uh, I'm looking at them. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're committed to sustainability. See, so you heard it? Everybody heard it? <laughs> Somebody tweet it? <laughs> yeah. The, the division and the board have been so supportive. Um, uh, uh, and the principals of the high schools that were uh, are very supportive. My middle school principals want to move it down. Uh, and that's really part of our next steps is how do we move it down now? Um, coming from a, I spent a lot of time teaching grade six, grade seven. Uh, so I'm excited about that piece too. Uh, so it definitely financial future plans in place. Right now we're just trying to mark work. <laughs> Hi Jennifer, I'm with the John Howard Society of Alberta and uh, we have a selection of uh, materials that we've developed, uh, uh, educational materials uh, that are available online like uh, PDFs and so forth. I'm really excited by what you're doing and um, because we're 
mandated to uh, give what teachers are, are needing and, and to, to contribute to that. And we have some funding that we're, we're uh, working with. My question is, um, how can we get involved and how can we participate in this and, and, and contribute to this in a, in a meaningful way? HTML5. Sorry, tech answer. Uh, any resources that are available on all sorts of platforms. When you're resource developing, um, Java's a limitation. Flash can sometimes be a limitation, although less so now. Um, build resources in a way that it can be built on any device without a plugin um, is been the key for everything. You know, we were trying to use Wolfram Alpha and it had this funny plugin. Well, that's probably not the best option for us. Um, yeah, building materials that can be used across platforms uh, it's, is the best feedback I can give to any organization that's building things. And yeah, HTML5 is your current standard that works across everything. Of course, I give a tech answer. All right, how are we doing? I have four minutes. All right, I can let you go. I can let you go early. Are there rumors of cookies? <laughs> oh, oh, sorry, Gord wants to talk. Less tech for sure for me. <laughs> um, we'd be willing to share as a district with any other district our thinking process to get to this stage. So, um, and partners. So definitely want to make, make this thing move and, and continue the success you're seeing. Uh, but we did a tremendous amount of pre-work to get to this stage. And that's work that we definitely would be willing to share as well. Yeah, and I wasn't there for that. They just hired me in September and said go. So how they got to even visualizing the fact that we should have flex learning. That guy. Cool. Well, thank you very much. You guys have been great. Thank you for all the questions. That's great to have a room that talks back to me, not just looks at me like I'm crazy. So thank you. <laughs>